what's going on welcome back to turner fishing so today's video is going to be a little bit different you know i've been following josh jones for a couple years now and he's honestly the main reason i went with garmin live scope as soon as i did because i seen all the monster fish he was catching but the other day i saw a post on his facebook you know somebody asked him why doesn't he record you know what he sees on the screen and explain how he's finding all these trophies fish and he makes a lot of sense you know he says you know i guide for a living that's how i make my money if i went out and showed everything then you know he charged a thousand dollars a day to go out so he's probably making what i make in a week in two months i mean he's probably making more than i make in two months and probably two or three days honestly which i, I understand it i get the hustle but as a fishing youtuber a crappy youtuber that wants to get out here and teach y'all you know everything about fishing it didn't sit right with me so i'm not saying i'm the biggest trophy hunter in the world but i can try to walk y'all through what's in my mind uh in the little area that we're in right now and be able to get you out on the water to find more fish bigger fish and especially more brush piles that have fish on them so that's the main objective of today's video i'm kind of going to go er over everything with live scope as i'm fishing so it may be a long video it may be a short video but so the first thing that you got to do you got to put yourself in a position to be able to find these fish so right now as y'all can see we're going to be kind of targeting this point right here and what it is there's a creek channel here and a creek channel here so they both come out and there's actually another river channel that runs through here also so what i'm doing is i'm putting myself in a better position to find other people's brush piles and what i mean by that is you know people aren't dumb they're going to find you know ledges and points uh humps and stuff and they're going to set brush out that's legitimately what i'm going to be looking for you know I've, I've set brush out myself but i don't have any around here uh, i've i've tight lined this area a couple times during the spring and doing really good so i just want to see if i can find any brush around here walk y'all through it maybe catch a couple fish with you but if you stick with me hit that subscribe button i'm gonna jump down here put the live scope in the water and i'm gonna tell you, talk about my settings and we're gonna go through the ropes and find us a brush pile and hopefully put a crappy in the boat all right Let's get this thing in the water. Now the first thing you want to do, see we're at 14 foot right now. I almost always keep my uh, my depth at 20 foot, almost all the time. Now you can throw it on auto, auto works okay if you're scanning a lot, but I know what the fish look like at 20. So whatever you're used to. Now, the number one thing I see with a lot of people, you know, I hop in their boat, they got the Ford range at like, at like 35 foot. Now, if you're sitting on a bridge or something, that may work. If you're sitting on a brush pile, you already know where it's at, that may work. But when you're looking for these fish, guys, the first step, you wanna crank that bad boy up to at least 80 feet. You know, I do 100 when I'm looking for bass, around 80 to 90 when I'm looking for brush piles. So I'm gonna throw it on 90 foot. So I am looking 90 foot for my transducer. My transducer is mounted on the left side of my pole. So I'm looking 90 foot this way, anywhere I turn. And legit, what I'm going to do is keep my foot on the trolling motor and I'm just going to troll around and I'm going to move my transducer around until I see something that resembles a football. You know, I'll, if it'll be, if it's a straight line, if it's a big line, it's probably a bass. Now, if it's a really big line, I'm probably going to throw at it with a crankbait or something. But you just pick an area and you start dissecting it. Now, you may think, you know, side scan is going to be a lot faster to do this. You are correct. If you want to find a lot of brush piles, side scan is the way to go. I don't have side scan. All I got is live scope. I had to sell my uh, my Helix 7 last year. But, oh, let me lock this thing down. 
But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scan around. You know, I'm, I'm targeting this point, so I'm, I'm gonna try to do like zigzags across this point right here. Like I said, there's a creek that comes out here and a creek that comes out here. So if I was a betting man, there's got to be a brush pile somewhere around here. The weather has got fish on it, that's another thing you gotta tackle, but we're gonna find the brush pile or a fish first. All right, so we got our first little fish right here. As y'all can see, the line. So that's probably a small bass. It doesn't have the shape of a crappie. It could be, you know, a perch or something like that. But crappie, they, they don't, some of them will move a lot, but the ones that you want to target, they don't move very much. Now, some of them you got to chase down and that's when it gets tricky. So here's another line right here. And that will probably be, I can see it going right there. Kind of hard to do this. <laughs> that will probably be a bass too. Or, I mean, it could be a, a lot of things, but a straight up and down line usually means a longer fish. I think I seen a gar at the top. I really wish I had the, the GPS one that I could actually record with. That would make this a whole lot easier. A crankbait. <laughs> Hang on, I'll show y'all what I'm talking about. So you got a ball of bait right there, and there's some lines behind it. it possibly could be some large mouth eating on that bait right there. if we can catch one of them some pretty big fish whatever it is got him oh he got off i think yeah he got off and he smacked the crap out of it I'll show y'all again what I'm fishing. All these lines right here. Pretty big fish, whatever it is. <clears throat> All right, whatever. Well, we just found a brush pile. <laughs> I didn't even know. I was about to just throw my jig at it. Those uh, other fish. Let me crank this thing back a little bit. See where I'm at. Yeah, that's legit. Let me show y'all. So I was messing with those bass and that's what I came up on. Right here on this point. So now, See if I can find my jig. Make sure it's the right species, then we'll try to explain how to find your jig. If I can get one of them to bite. All right, now that we found a brush pile that has potentially some crappie on it, I mean, they still could be bluegill. I'm gonna get my big pole. This is a 13 foot ACC. And, all right, so you gotta remember, whatever side your transducer's on, like if you got it on your trolling motor and it's on the right side, you know, it's got a, a 20 degree cone, kind of like this coming from it. And the further out it gets, the further. But on your screen, as you can see, you know, some of those are brighter than others. The ones that's brighter, like that little catfish looking thing at the top of the brush. And there's some in the brush that's brighter. The brighter your return 
the more in the cone that it is. So essentially you want the brightest return on the fish and you want the brightest return on your jig. That will 100% guarantee that you're, you know, right above that fish. You're not off to the left a little bit. You're not off to the right a little bit. So remember my transducer is on the left side of my pole. So I want to fish on the left side of my mount. So we're gonna drop it right on these guys' heads right here. And my pole's wrapped up, it seems. Always something. <laughs> All right, now we're on top of their head. So, basically I want to get the brightest return on the fish. I see a big dot right here. We get the brightest return on it. Then after you fish a while, you kind of know where to drop your jig at. I mean, you can't get out there and just do this day one. It takes a little bit of time, but you want to kind of hover above the fish. Now, if you have a bigger screen, this is a lot easier to tell if you know your baits in front of their head or not i have the cheapest graph you can get so kind of i gotta wing it so legitimately i lost the brush pile it's over here <laughs> and to set up you know try to put a weight above this so you can kind of tell where your jig is at because you'll see two things falling through the water instead of one and it's a lot easier to pick up that way by showing y'all how to find them but i at least want to catch one for you not enough fish to warrant me fishing here all right so the other one didn't produce either <laughs> The struggle bus is real. So now we're gonna go to a brush pile that y'all seen a bunch of times. Let's see if we can get one to bite. Well, I can kind of explain what I'm doing. Is a nice one. I didn't think we was ever gonna get a bite. I switched to midnight. Yeah, I tried a couple shad colors, but everything. So I went that straight midnight. Imitates a blue, uh, a minnow really good. Finally, dang bite after like four freaking hours. <sighs> I think it was the color. That's a Golly. That's probably two pounder. Come here, big boy. Oh, nah. He ran like one, though. Get your butt in here. Nice solid pound on the quarter, though. Midnight, coming in clutch. <laughs> I 
All right, so we figured out something. So I'm gonna explain what I'm doing. So right here, I'm gonna show you all this brush pile with all the fish on it. Let me get the best little angle on it. Right here, y'all see all them dang fish. Now what I'm doing is I'm casting past them. I'm, I'm gonna explain it as I do it, how I can handle. I'm gonna cast past them like that. And then I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna find my jig as it's falling. And right when I get above the fish, I'm gonna start winding. And you'll slowly just see your jig go over the top of these fish. You want to keep it above them. I mean, some throws you're gonna get a bite, some throws you ain't. <laughs> That's fishing. So I'm gonna repeat the process. And if you got your settings dialed in, if you hit the right spots, you're not gonna move it because you're gonna hit where you need to be almost all the time. Now that part takes time. I mean, I've had this thing for almost two years. I still miss my mark sometimes. All right, guys. We ended up with, I think, 16. So, overall, not a bad day. Wasn't exactly an easy day. But as soon as I switched to midnight and I actually used this transparent crappy man green also, just grinded them out. I mean, it's like four o'clock now, but we got enough to eat. And that's what counts. I really just wanted to get out here and show y'all, you know, how to find these fish for live scope, how to find more brush piles, how to put more fish in your boat. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button for me. And I will catch y'all on the next one.